Dame Joan Collins may be 90 years old, but the actress has never stopped living a glamorous life. Born in London, she still has a luxurious main home there to this day. Joan lives in a 3 million pound flat in Belgravia with her husband Percy Gibson and this district is so upscale that it has Buckingham Palace, Hyde Park and more just around the corner. Joan purchased her home here over 30 years ago and set about finding it. I looked at about 60 flats in London. I wanted to be near the West End and the theaters and near to Chelsea. I love Belgravia. It's wonderfully quiet. When she's not in London, Collins divides her time between Los Angeles, New York City and France. Located Locations where she also reportedly owns stunning properties. Joan Collins made her film debut in 1951 and was signed by 20th Century Fox in 1955. That same year, she replaced Marilyn Monroe as the sultry lead in The Girl in the Red Velvet Swing. Later, in the 1980s, Collins scored the biggest role of her career as the man-eating femme fatale Alexis Carrington in Dynasty. It was undoubtedly her favorite part, and Joan said about this role, I played Alexis for nine and a half years and I found all kinds of different facets in her character. I loved her clothes. Her gig on the hugely popular soap made Collins the highest paid actress on TV for a time. She appeared on countless magazine covers. Now, Joan who has three children and three grandchildren is 90 years old and still fabulous as ever. She and her husband Percy divide their time between a handful of homes from France to New York and even in Los Angeles, but her main residence is still in London. In 2021, Dame Joan Collins put her New York City apartment on the market for $2.05 million. Her unit here was complete with three beds, three baths, and a whopping 16 closets throughout. The 21-story Dorchester building is a post-war building built in 1957 and its close proximity to Central Park is a serious selling point. Located on 57th Street and Park Avenue in the heart of Manhattan, the Dorchester is known as a white glove co-op and is nestled within other residential skyscrapers on the city's billionaire's row. Of course, residents here also get perks like a full-time doorman and concierge while the building itself features a brand new fitness center laundry room as well as a parking garage for residents only. Joan's former apartment was situated on the 8th floor and spanned 2,200 square feet of space. It was actually three units combined into one much larger residence. The list price came at quite a steal considering that Collins first asked for just under 3 million back in 2011. Other highlights of Joan's former Manhattan pad include two master suites located in separate wings, another guest bedroom, as well as the aforementioned 16 closets. Apparently, the amount of closets is what caught the actress's eye in the first place. I mean, can you blame her? At the time the listing photos were revealed, one of the bedrooms was set up as a home office, while the light and airy open plan living room and dining room showcased the perfect entertaining space. The unit further had three exposures, and while the kitchen was on the smaller side, any new resident could certainly open up the kitchen too. During her time living here, Joan was known for hosting parties here with other celebs including her sister, romance novelist Jackie Collins, actress Diane Carroll, and musicians Michael Feinstein and Neil Sedeca. Joan said, Every time Neil or Michael told us they'd come, we would rent a piano in the hopes we could persuade them to play a few tunes and I was overwhelmed that they would always graciously agree. The actress told the New York Times that she fell in love immediately with the spaciousness of the rooms and the feeling of light and airiness. Joan and her fifth husband, Percy Gibson, who got married in 2002, purchased the Manhattan apartment that same year. While they were spending time in New York, it got to be less and less thus deciding to let go of this home. Reportedly, Joan had been living in London, but summers at her home in Saint-Tropez in the south of France and spends time on her yacht in the harbor below. But those aren't the only locations that she has properties. In 2017, Joan Collins purchased a new glamorous property in Los Angeles for $2.1 million after selling her other place located nearby for $4.4 million. The Hollywood veteran actress's home here features three bedrooms and three and a half baths, as well as a grand entrance hall. Located in the Wilshire Corridor neighborhood of LA, her condo is set in a full service building while the unit itself is north facing and boasts 3,000 square feet of space with luxury and 
interiors. Details include floor-to-ceiling windows with views of the city and mountains, as well as large wooden double doors into the home that are a preview of what's to come. Past the grand entry hall with soaring ceilings, you'll find the great room sporting a massive fireplace as well as a stunning formal dining room. Then, the kitchen is from the German luxury brand Hog and Paul, who specializes in cabinets. The cooking space further offers an Eden Island and plenty of perks such as double ovens, while a private terrace is situated just off the apartment's breakfast area. Joan and Percy's master suite is fit for a star, and while the ensuite has a central jacuzzi tub and glass shower, as well as two walk-in closets. Elsewhere, there's an office and a stunning swimming pool, which Joan can no doubt utilize. Additional highlights include two parking spaces, a secure and private elevator, as well as valet parking. While Dame Jonah has stunning properties all over, she still calls London, England her main home. Unfortunately, her residence in Belgravia is also the one she keeps the most under wraps, most likely because she's lived there for over 30 years. Her luxury flat is situated in the poshest neighborhood of London, Belgravia, and it had cost around 3 million pounds. How posh is Belgravia, you may ask? Well, so much so that it has Buckingham Palace, Hyde Park, and other high-profile spots right on its doorstep. You'll find homes on sale that are well above the average, with some priced as much as 32 million pounds. The expensive and historic abodes in Belgravia today were built by Richard Grosvenor, second Marquess of Westminster in the 19th century. When Joan spoke about her central London apartment, she said, I looked at about 60 flats in London. I wanted to be near the West End in the theaters and near to Chelsea. I love Belgravia, it's wonderfully quiet. She loves to visit local independent shops in the neighborhood too, including a cute bookshop and a newsstand. Joan has had a couple of close calls at her Belgravia home over the years though. In 2017, her London place flooded, causing the ceiling to collapse, and did a lot of damage to the interiors too. Disaster struck again when Joan and Percy escaped a scary fire at their flat in 2019, and Joan was treated for breathing difficulties following the incident. Joan loves to dine at the Ivy Chelsea Garden on Kings Road and shop in Selfridges and Harrods. While Joan has rarely let prying eyes inside of her Belgravia home, we did get a chance to see a couple of her other properties across the globe, so for today, that'll wrap up this house tour. But before we go, answer this question for me. If you had a few disasters go down in your home over the span of a few years, would you stay put or find a new home? Let me know down in the comments if you could weather a flood and house fire like Joan did. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer, and if you'd like to check out another tour before you go, then stay tuned for our look into the homes of Judy Dench. Bye. Judy Dench is an elegant and timeless actress who's had a charmed career in film and TV for decades. While she's a success in Hollywood, this UK native has preferred to spend the years of her life in her homeland, most notably in her historical farmhouse located in Surrey. Even after her husband's passing, Judy had continued to call the same village home, and it's hard to picture her living anywhere else. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year, so go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you want to see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Dame Judi Dench is easily one of the most successful and well-known British performers of all time. While she spent the better part of her earlier career performing on the English stage and TV, by the 90s, she'd explode into film with her performance as M through seven James Bond films. Since then, she's gone on to be nominated for eight Academy Awards, even taking one home for Best Supporting Actress for her appearance in Shakespeare in Love. Despite her success across the pond in Hollywood, Judy hasn't ever considered leaving her home country of the UK to live anywhere else. In the early 70s, she married her husband, fellow actor Michael Williams, and these two would spend their days together living in their longtime farmhouse in Surrey for the rest of Michael's life. Even after Michael passed away, 
in 2001, Judy continued to call the village of Outwood home. And over the years since, she's developed a remarkable relationship with the community, oftentimes coming to their aid too. It was also in large part because Judy still lived here that she finally met another man, the conservationist David Mills, who introduced himself to her after opening a squirrel enclosure at the wildlife center he runs near her home in 2010. So in many ways you could say that Judy Dench's relationship with the place that she calls home was faded in the stars. Hey guys, it's Kara the Vampire Slayer back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment, today checking out where Judy Dench calls home. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit me up on Instagram to chat. And now let's get into this video. Judy Dench's longtime home is nestled into the East Surrey countryside in the United Kingdom. If you were ever to visit, it's there that you would find a tiny little village known as Outwood that despite its population of less than a thousand living souls, has a very famous citizen living here. This picturesque town is located on the Tandridge district and on the very outskirts lies the quaint farmhouse home of Judy Dench, who has lived here since the 1970s. Judy's home was originally built as far back as 14 and the interior of the property is said to be as large as 7,000 square feet of space. Unfortunately, Dame Judy has never invited us into her home to take a look at the place. After all, she's not exactly part of the TikTok generation, if you know what I mean. And the closest we've ever come to sneaking a peek at the inside is on her grandson's social media platforms. According to the Surrey Media sources, her home is said to include a separate cottage as a guest house, workshop shops, barns, lots of land, a private pond, and her very own swimming pool as well. But more important than simply calling Outwood home is how much Judy has come to mean to the greater community at large. So let's explore her relationship with the town a little bit. According to local sources, Dame Judy loves to pop out of her home to visit a ton of different locations around Outwood. In fact, one of her favorite spots is a local pub that sits in the very center of the village called The Castle. Not only does Judy love to enjoy the occasional pint at this place, well, when it was under the threat of being shut down, she stopped in to make sure that that wouldn't happen. During the worldwide pandemic, when businesses, especially restaurants, were shutting their doors left and right, the same thing almost happened to this place. Rather than sit around and let that happen, Judy wound up backing a campaign to save the pub from being closed down, and when a vote was held to decide once and for all what to do with the place, Judy support of preserving the pub went a long way. It was decided to list the business as an asset to the community and give it a five-year reprieve under which plans to alter it in any way would be denied. And preserving the local pub isn't the only thing Judy has done for the village of Outwood. She also helped open the renovated community center known as Lloyd Hall in 2015. Back then, this institution underwent a 500,000 pound renovation following long-standing structural issues that threatened to put it out of commission for good. So Judy lent her name and cachet to the project while also showing up to cut the ribbon when the center was reopened, drawing a crowd of over 200 people, which is literally a third of the town's population. Then there was the stamp of approval that she gave to the upgrades at the village's local movie theater. Formerly known as Oxted's Everyman Cinema, Judy has been frequenting this spot to catch her favorite films for as long as she's lived here. And when the theater finally underwent some much needed renovations, she was there as a special guest at the venue's reopening where she also received a special plaque honoring her commitment to the arts in the town. While attending the ceremony, Judy would reminisce over her experiences in the theater with the Surrey media, telling them, it's blown me away. It's got a very inclusive atmosphere to it and it still feels very homey like it did 30 years ago. I remember the first time I came here, there was a woman who welcomed you as you walked in and gave you your ticket and she was the same person who undid the curtains and at the end asked everyone if they had a nice time. And we really did because she was so welcoming. You could come here and see a terrible film but still have a great evening because it's just so nice. Last but certainly not least, Judy has also starred in and lent her support to a BBC documentary that was shot in the village's woodlands in 2017. This hour-long film was shot on some of the Surrey Wildlife's trust most 
most beautiful nature reserves, including the ancient woodland located at Nower Wood, as well as Norbury Park. As a patron of Surrey Wildlife Trust and a partner to the man who runs it, Judy has always expressed an interest in nature, and she shares that passion with those closest to her. But as perfect as Judy's relationship with the Outwood community sounds, there is one downside to living her life in such a remote place, and that's what we'll talk about next. As busy as Judy has managed to keep herself throughout her entire life, there's simply no way of outrunning the hands of time, and late last year, Judy almost found herself facing her own mortality. This 87-year-old actress is suffering from the deteriorating eye condition known as macular degeneration, and it's something that has come to affect her life in a series of different ways. This issue first cropped up for her in the early part of the last decade, and since then, things have only gotten worse. Today, Judy struggles to read scripts, and she usually has her daughter or a friend come by to visit and read to her whatever project she's been sent by her agent. She even struggles to watch films these days and generally has a friend tag along to narrate what's happening, much like she has someone reads her script. But as awful as it sounds, it pales in comparison to a recent experience she had in her own home. While walking through the halls, Judy didn't happen to notice that one of her carpets was bunched up as she walked across it. She tripped and fell while she was totally alone in her home with no one around to help. Well, maybe I should rephrase that. She does happen to have a pet parrot who knew something was wrong and reportedly kept asking her, what are you doing? What are you doing? Unfortunately, the parrot wasn't intelligent enough to pick up the phone and call somebody. With her partner David living four miles away, Judy ultimately had to rely on herself to do something about her situation, and she says after 30 minutes of lying on the floor, she finally regained enough strength to pull herself back up. When asked by the Surrey press if she she could have just used a panic button to alert someone for help, Judy admitted that she doesn't own one and told them, it's just something you have to live with, but you want to be independent and it's very, very difficult. Well, let's hope that Judy doesn't have to experience anything like that again and can continue her peaceful life in her longtime village in Surrey. All right, everyone, that's gonna bring this Judy Dench house tour to an end. Thanks for watching and please be sure to let us know what you thought about her longtime home and and bond with the community down in the comments down below. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Follow me on Instagram if you want to chat, and I'll catch you all in another one. Bye!